Oh hey, I'm suffering from a bad cough today. This video is gonna be interesting. <coughs> Hi up workers, it's me JD and welcome back to the channel. Today we are playing again Zeus Master of Olympus. Now I previously live streamed this a long time ago, maybe on Twitch, and you probably recently may have seen a, vi a video of a previous live stream on YouTube here on this channel. But this is an actual video rather than a stream, so hooray. I want to get into this I want to get back into this game a little bit, and for my first video, I want to focus on the Adventure Editor, since, well, let's put it this way. I have not found any good quality videos that discuss the Adventure Editor in detail. So for today's video, I want to get as much of the Adventure Editor as I can. Consider this either, consider this a first timer for me, a tutorial for the rest of you guys, let's jump right into it. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video and actually use pictures to describe what the Adventure Editor is like. Because when I played this Adventure Editor in this session, I was clueless and really did not follow along with either a professional or followed along with the Adventure Editor guide that came with the game. So I was kind of clueless going into this from the start. So. I'm just going to switch to pictures, and what you're about to see and hear is going to be a bit of a little brief guide, or tutorial almost, that can follow along with the um, the Adventure Editor guide that came with your Zeus Master of Olympus or Poseidon Master of Atlantis game. So if you have the, that guide, then you might as well follow along, otherwise you can probably just download the game from like Grant, Grant GOG, you can probably like download the game from GOG and get the guide that way. Otherwise, just follow along, you'll be fine. Okay, so before we start this adventure guide tutorial, I wanna mention that most professionals usually start with something along the lines of pencil and paper. Notes are a big thing when it comes to making adventures. And now nowadays in 2018, you would probably see adventure editors today using stuff like an iPad or a tablet to actually take notes and really work on the advent, really work on their adventure while they're using the editor. Um, the th the main goals that you really want to focus on when actually playing the adventure editor is you want to look at your adventure not just in the eyes of the developer but also in the eyes of the player. Like what do you want your player to achieve as they go through your adventure? And then on top of that, you also want to look at what obstacles do you want to present to the player. As you as you as they're playing through your adventure, do you want to keep it easy? Do you want to go full hardcore and just push out a hard hard level on them? Either way, no matter what you choose for your adventure, this is this is the sky's the limit. But what a good level, a good adventure, always set, sets forth the two challenges of achievement and obstacles. Other than that. From what you can tell, if you want to get inspiration for your adventures, look into Greek history. Like, we already have adventures in the game already that describe, like, seven different adventures related to Greek history. Um, if you can find more that can be associated with a city builder game, you can probably use that for your adventure. But there are places out there that can also help. I think other than that, I'll just go right in and get started. The first thing you're greeted with when you click on Adventure Editor is the Adventure Editor selection screen. From here, you have the choices of the custom adventures that you have, be it the be it the created custom adventures that are already in the game from the time that you the time that you open it, or if you want, you can go right ahead and get started on a new adventure. Which, if you click on New Adventure, you should see the New Adventure text pop text editor pop up. And from here, you can display you name the title of your adventure. Note that this is why you need a pencil and paper or an iPad because you're going to be planning this out accordingly. And if and this and this new adventure text is going to be the title of your adventure when you when you really start pl start planning out your adventure when you start putting your putting your work hard work into the game. Now for the purposes of the new advent 
for purposes of this screen, I used test for YouTube just to demonstrate how it worked. I mean, I was clueless. Like I said, I was clueless and really wasn't knowing what to do. So yeah, test worked out. But what you really want to focus on when you, when you pick a name for your adventure is the name that you want to go with. Like for example, the Odyssey actually describes the Odyssey is a perfect title to describe the story by Homer of the adventures of Odysseus during his 20-year expedition. And as, as the role model of a city builder, you are there to rebuild the lost city of Ithaca that he left while he was out fighting against the Trojans. So think about that when you're making a name for your, for your adventure. This next screen that you're seeing right here is the main hub that you will be working with a lot during this adventure editor. And the buttons you'll see right here were really self-explanatory, but if you don't know what they are, I will go through them in full detail. First, you have Edit Parent City Map, which which what you're going to be working with a lot when you're, when you're building your map. And I will show the map in detail when we get when we get later on in the tutorial. But yeah, that's where you would go if you want to start building your parent city. Get get that situated. Next below that is edit world map, which is basically going to be the world scenario, which basically describes all the cities that you're going to be working with and what cities would be more important to the adventure that you are trying to build, like. Your parent city being one of them, some foreign distant distant allies, vassals, rivals, and maybe even some future colonies if you get to that point. Now, these other buttons, I wasn't sure at the time, but I'm sure of some things. This top button right here where it says Atlantean, if you click on that, you can either change that to an Atlantean adventure or a Greek adventure, depending on what adventure you wrote. The button below that, edit text, that takes you to a notepad a notepad screen that displays the text that you're building for your adventure and this is the text that will be used when you are testing your game so please pay, so just pay attention to what you're writing and there's instructions there that'll help. The bitmap button that you see right next to it is the bitmap of the image that will be displayed when you post your, when you um, open your adventure for the first time you'll have to refer to like appendix 5 in the adventure editor guide to refer to the to the bitmap numbers that you will need to know if you want to put a specific bitmap in for your adventure next you have the the parent episodes right here it's where you it's where you build the adventure from start to finish you can ha you can have when you when you set goals, you could set, definitely set the next episode to be either stay in the parent city or go off to a new colony to establish it. And basically, the colony goals are going to be the exact same thing, which you will see down below where it says colony episodes. You can have up to four of each. And as for parent episodes, I believe you can have like up to ten of those. Title, introduction, and, com and complete, that's basically the... The, par the paragraphs that are written in your edit text button, your, your notepad. And where it says adventure text not found, don't worry about that for the first time. That's going to be displayed once you have completed your notepad. And finally, adventure text. I'm not sure how that works. You might have to look at the adventure editor guide for that. I was, I'm was, i still not sure about that, and um, I wasn't sure then. This next window that you're seeing right here is the episode editor, which... For every episode that you make for your adventure, you're going to be using this screen for each. So, as long as you're working with each adventure, you're going to have different events, different goals that you're going to be using for each of your episodes. What the, the few main focus points that I want to bring up for for these adventure editors is the first one that you see right here is adjust the start date and initial funds both of which can only be edited via the first episode of your adventure initially you'll see 2500 bc and zero for each but this will only be editable for the first episode so pay attention um adjust the start date um whatever you set for the start date that's going to be the date for the start of your adventure and for every episode 
it starts from the date that you last left off the previous episode, which it can vary dependent on where you end up. For initial funds, that's a totally different story. You are editing the initial funds that you start with if you play the three middle difficulties, as the beginner difficulty and the Olympian difficulty each have different fund types. So if you like so if you like play beginner you get 50% more money and if you get Olympian you get 20% less money. So that's what you want to work off of and you got to have enough money to focus you got to have enough money for the Olympian level but you don't want to give too much to a beginner. Think about that. The next one I want to focus on is Panhellenic Games. This button you don't really have to worry about if you're playing an Atlantean adventure because there are no Panhellenic games in Atlantis. But you all have to worry about this if you're playing a Greek adventure. Like, if you have an, a later date, that can be a good thing. If you want Panhellenic games in your adventure, focus. It, it'll work. And you have other buttons like Mythology, Buildings Allowed, Episode Goals, Events, Edit City Resources, Edit World Settings, and Pyramid Settings, all of which I will describe next. Mythology Window. Now this is where things get interesting for your adventure. Well, one of the things that gets interesting is choosing which gods are friendly to your adventure and which are opponents, basically. So if you have opponent gods, then those gods are going to be trouble down the road and you will be setting when they invade or when they unleash a monster or something like that. As for oppo proponent gods, which are on the right, you can set which gods can be worshipped in your city and what kind of benefits they can provide to you later on should you decide to provide should you decide the resources that you need down below this list you'll see buttons like sanctuary yes or no max sanctuaries and not only that distant gods can also have an impact for that which i have no understanding how that would work unless it was some kind of quest. As for the bottom buttons, you will see Opponent Monster 1, Opponent Monster 2, and Independent Monster. Opponent Monster 1 and Opponent Monster 2 are automatically decided by the proximate 1 and 2 in Opponent Gods, and those can be unleashed by those gods. As for Independent Monster, that is the third monster that could probably appear in your, in your adventure, and that, in turn, can be an independent monster that just un just gets unleashed by itself. Like, but the only exception to the independent monster role is the Ares and Hephaestus. If you have those as your proximate proponent gods, you cannot have the dragon or Jace or or Talos as your independent monster. So pay be careful when you when you choose your gods and monsters. Before we go on to allowed structures, I do want to mention that mythology can be changed over time, while the uh, while the proponent and opponent gods can be can be only be changed for the first episode. These cannot be changed in future episodes. But what can be changed is the number of sanctuaries in your city, and whether a sanctuary is allowed in your city or whether it's not. As for the next screen you're about to see is allowed structures. This is similar to that particular scenario in which, well, if you think about it, you can start an episode without having a single structure, uh, without having a particular structure, and then later on push another structure in later episodes. Like add the structure in to a, to an uh, to, uh, to add to add a particular element of surprise over time, or add like a particular element of Improving your own city. So, for example, if a certain race, so for example, like with the olive press and the winery, if a certain, if you know that a certain resource is not going to be available for one episode, you probably won't want that reason. You probably won't want that building in the first episode in the first place. But once that becomes available, then you should be able to build that in your city. You probably want to allow buildings to be built as time goes on versus not allow them to be built. But that also depends on the resources in your city. For example, the mint is a special case. You can set that off 
for the first episode, but if you have the Gates of Hades as a particular god in, as a particular sanctuary in your city, that mint can automatically be placed later on once the once that's clear. But if you already have silver, then that could be a wholly different story because the mint can be available by then. Now, as for other buildings, you probably don't even see a lot of the buildings. Like for example, you don't see the Grower's Lodge. You don't see the the carting shed or the dairy. You don't even see either the what is it? You don't even see you don't even see fisheries or urchin quays either. Those are automatically decided by the resources that you place in your city, and that can be described later on as we get to the city resources section of this tutorial. So as for this section, just focus on which buildings you want the player to build early, and then progressively allow those buildings to be built later on as they progress through the adventure. The next screen we'll be looking at is your episode goal screen. In other words, what do you want the player to achieve as they're going through your adventure? It can be set to many different things. Like if you click add goal, you have different choices to make. Like for example, you could put a population goal where you can set a number of, like X number of people in your city and at any time that has to be set before the episode can be completed treasury is something similar where you have a y amount of y amount of drachma needed in order to progress to a later episode whether it be a colony or stick with a parent city because maybe you need the money for a colony or maybe you're going to need it to bribe enemy cities later on when they when the wars start sanctuary goals is basically get the sanctuary into your city. It can be for a particular god, or you can set it to any god, something like that. But what, what what I like about the sanctuary goal is that you can have one sanctuary goal where you want where you want the player to build a specific sanctuary, and then maybe you could particularly set a sanct another sanctuary goal for any other god that can actually be built in your city. Maybe. Maybe something, maybe someone that could probably be used useful later on in the episode. Next one we're going to look at is the support goal. If you want to support a certain number of soldiers or a certain number of naval units, that can be something worthwhile. Towers and walls aren't really that necessary for this goal. Um, quest goals are usually those goals set by gods that can be set later on, and that can be set in events. You'll get the quest later on once you once you work on that. Slay a monster goal is the next thing, which really requires you to have a monster monster goal or, or, or monster event in your episode, and that is set by like before the mythology tab, where you are setting your opponent monsters and independent monsters. Yearly production is if you. Think, for example, for yearly production, you want to think to the first adventure you find when you get to Zeus, Master of Olympus, which is Zeus and Europa. When you're building Thebes, at one of the later episodes, you'll focus on producing an X amount of marble a year. This is something similar to that, except if you, have, if you know you're going to have a certain amount of, of, of a product by that time, you should have your adventurer work on that production. Next, you're going to look at the rule goal, which says, oh, before you go on to, before you go further on into your adventure, you need to set this, you need to set your, you need to set a enemy city in your world as a vassal. And finally, next you have yearly profit. If you want to keep, have, if you want to get a profit in a certain year, like for example through trade, through producing silver, through through hippodrome through hippodrome's um, profits, that sort of thing. For housing, this is similar to the population goal and instead of having a particular amount of people in your city, you want a particular amount of people in a certain type of housing. Like for example, X amount of people in a townhouse. For trading partners, Self-explanatory, go through the world, roll, part, roll people, get them to be your ally. That's how trading partners work. 
set aside goods. It's basically just you want to mainly you want setting aside goods for what if you want your next episode after that to be a colony. So if you want to set aside X amount of, say, food for a colony, that can be a gift towards the colony that you're going to be establishing in the following episode. Now we're going to set the goals for... Now the goals for the Atlantean side of things are a bit different. Like, for example, the pyramids and the hippodrome goals. If you want a specific pyramid in your, in your city or if you want a hippodrome in your city... X amount of stadies long, which is X amount of spaces, X amount of track pieces that you build, that's the kind of goal that you're looking for. That's mostly the goals that you're going to be working with when you're building your goals. And if you need ideas for a final goal, I am watching, I'm also watching Zeus Heaven, the Zeus Heaven website, and one, of, and one of the suggestions for final episode goals is... Rule City 1, Rule City 2, A Sanctuary to Zeus, Fulfill a Quest by a God, Support 5 Triremes, or Frigates, whichever, whichever, depending on your, depending on the type of your adventure, and a population of about 4,500 people. That could be the idea for a final goal, with some, with some major, major, major obstacles to progress in your way as well. And that's what we're going to describe next in the events section. The next screen is the events screen. This screen is where you choose the events that you want to set up for your adventure, which can include a monster invasion, a god invasion, a request for assistance, a demand by a rival. Basically, whatever is available in the Greek world this is the this is the thing that can be set can be an obstacle or a help dependent on how you want to set up your adventure. For example, you have a goods request or demand by an, another city, a military request similar to that where instead of get asking for a certain amount of goods, you're requesting military assistance for a strike. They're requesting assistance for a military strike by your, one of your allies onto a rival. Then we have a quest, which as described in the goals section, is basically quests for heroes that are assigned by gods. Monster invasion, god invasion. For monster, it's basically just that. That's the disaster section. Um, wage... Wages inc wage increase, decrease, trade change, which can include demand or supply, price, trade, tr the status of whether a trade route shuts down or opens up, the status of a city, whether it's st whether it exists or whether it's away, or whether whether a city turns from you or decides to go on your side. This is an example of one of those screens where you'll be setting the type of events. This is an example of a goods request event, which will, which will, which asks that a city in your world request for a particular type of resource. For example, fleece, olive oil, olives, wine, basically something that they would need like for any particular reason that you can set. And you can set that for either a one-time event or, or a recurring event or whether, whether that kind of event is triggered by some other event that happens or, or in particular whether, it, whether it's triggered when the episode completes. That sort of thing. Think about that when you're building your adventure and setting the events slash obstacles that the player would need to go through during a particular episode for them to say, oh, I'm going to be going through this. I need to go through that in order to go through my adventure. I want to demonstrate a particular example with the events screen. If you go to the adventure Athens throughout the ages, two of the cities that you'll be working with 
during a, during one of the later episodes, we'll start demanding you for a resource that you actually need to start building some housing that you will need to complete a particular goal. And if you accept that, that could be the that could be the difference between completing actually completing the goal and not having enough resources to even complete the goal. So this is kind of the example of the obstacles that a goods request could bring to your player. So think about that as well. Next, we're going to look at editing city resources. In other words, the resources that your city is able to produce. And this is also, when you go into buildings allowed, what affects what buildings you're able to build for your city. Now, keep in mind some things when you're building this section. You're able to have 12 different resources in your city, but you're only allowed a maximum of four food types in the world that you're building. So if your city is able to produce all four of those food types, you can do that. But if you introduce like a fifth, fifth, if you introduce a fifth food type by some other means, then it's going to cause errors. So pay attention to that when you're building your adventure. For example, if you set, for example, if you have your food type set to something along the lines of wheat, fish, urchin, meats, and you later on pr introduce oranges with the Orchard of Hera, or if you introduce, if you introduce some, um, I don't know, if, if, you, if you instead have cheese instead of meats, and you introduce meats with the, um, with Artemis' Menagerie, then that's also going to create errors when you when you compile your adventures so pay attention to that as for your other resources go ham but you but but, but even though greeks can, but even though you if you greek even though if you decide you we want your greek city to produce black marble and or calc there really isn't a use for those types of resources in a greek city anyways those are mainly for use in atlantis when you get to that so you want to pay attention and really study hard. You'll you'll get you'll get more detail on that when you get into the adventure guide that comes with your game. World settings for colony is the next one, which also just sets the trait settings for your city when you when you establish a colony, like what what resources does your city buy from that particular colony and what resources do they sell. This is kind of the same idea when you actually go into the world map and set cities. You're going to going to see the options for trade going into that as well. So this is mainly for the parent city. When you get to the world map, that's where you're going to set the trade settings for your allies, your rivals, and your colonies as well. So pay attention to those. This setting that you're about to see only applies to Atlantean adventures. So if you want to build like a Greek city or Greek adventure, I recommend you skip to this timestamp because this adventure, the second section only applies to Atlantean cities. This is the pyramid settings section where you set which pyramids are able to be built in your city, like up to... In the Adventure Editor Guide, I believe you're only able to build up to six. So yeah, you can only be able to build up to six pyramids in your adventure. This is the section where you're going to have to choose wisely and pick the best ones for your Atlantean city, or whichever ones seem suitable for the adventure at hand. The following screen right here is the is where you'll set the types of marble that'll be used for your pyramid, whether you use black marble or white marble. Now this is where I also have to mention about the black marble not being able to be used in Greek adventures because there is no use for them, not even for a sanctuary. Even though you'll be able to produce black marble, there really isn't a use for it in your world. Unless, for example, like there's some kind of Atlantean city in the distance that decided to be your ally and is requesting that as possible trade. Which I doubt is going to happen anyways. Now we get into the real nitty gritty, the maps. Next, when I went through this adventure editor, I focused on the world map. Now here's where you're going to set the settings for some things like which cities do you, will you have in your adventure, your parent city, the colonies that you'll establish later on, the allies, vassals, and rivals that you'll be working either with or against throughout the world. This is the stuff that will be used 
during your adventure and what resources they can provide should you decide to should you decide to say hey I want this via trade right now you're seeing the Greek map which is basically what most Greek missions will be like there's other adventures that we'll, we'll see that but here you can establish like prices for certain goods or trading routes for other cities this kind of thing now I also want to really pay attention to this because when I was playing Zeus and Poseidon both on stream and during this recording session I used a mod that allowed me to have the screen extend as much so it could fit my native my computer's native ra aspect ratio. This is usually not recommended when playing the adventure editor because it usually just messes up the cities. And I I don't know how it will work the first time around, but I'm but I'm sure maybe it could be fixed later on. I'm not sure about that, but as for other stuff, the cities you make can provide goods or even buy goods. This is the kind of thing that you'll be setting in the world map. Pay, for more details, go into the Adventure Editor Guide and seek the appendices, seek appropriate appendices. Finally, I focused on the Parent City Map Editor, and this is basically going to be the same same tutorial that you will so let's see for the Colony episodes. So you'll have to go through this section multiple times dependent on how many colonies that you'll have or if you're working with just the parent city so this is something you'll want to look at if you're willing to build your parent city build your colony otherwise just import a map and you should be fine um in this in this section you will see some major buttons for example you have the brush button at the top which sets what size brush you will be using to create the materials you will need. The blank terrain button where, for example, if you make a mistake, this is where you could put a blank map to show, oh, I made a mistake. Here's a blank, here's a blank slate of grass for you to work with. Next section is the trees. If you're going to produce wood, then you'll need a lot of these. Otherwise, just have trees for decoration. It'll work out. Then you have the water, beach, marshland, those kind of water-based sections, which will put the water out on your map. Like, pay attention as well to the world map because this is the most important piece of the puzzle when you're building your world. You probably don't want mu that. Mu you probably don't want a huge amount of water if you're working with a landlocked area. Where your where your only source where your only types of trade are going to be land routes, and if you're and if you're working off an island, then you're going to be using a lot of water tiles to work with in the first place. Next, you're going to look at the meadow button, which, well, if you're working with wheat, carrot, onions, or anything that grows or anything that uses a meadow, you're going to want this in your city. Fish and urchins, kind of the same ideas. Only work with these if you have fish and urchin as two of your food resources. And especially if you have like the like the promontory of Poseidon or the Citadel of Poseidon, he is gonna provide fish as a food source for your citizen as, as a food source. So that if that's one of your food sources, then you're gonna need this a lot. Rocks, scrub, elevation, which is raising your land, lowering your land. Basically, if you have like a mountainous terrainy area you're going to use this a lot to increase the terrain of your land or if you have like a low level land you probably don't want to use this as much or if you want just like a plateau in your area go right ahead next you'll have the disaster points like earthquakes lava landslides tsunamis floods those type of things we have invasion points which are either sea or land whichever ones you have. Next you have entry and exit points, particularly for example for sea trade, for land trade, for immigration. These are the entry points and exit points that you are required for your city. And finally, land animals. When you, If you're producing meat, if you want wolves to be a factor in your city, this is one of, this is the thing that you'll be working with if you want to focus on that. Other buttons at your disposal include the grid button, the refresh button, the 
rotation button, like your camera, and paths. Those are the other things you can edit in your map. And keep in mind that these settings are also the same settings for when you're working on a colony map, so think about that as well. So that's basically the basics of what you need to know about the Poseidon Adventure Editor. Don't forget, pencil and paper or iPad must when you're working on your adventures. Don't forget to save frequently in case of crash or a game crash or anything, a computer crash or anything like that. And don't forget to play test your adventures as you go. Like, if you make a mistake, you can always go back and fix it later on. And don't, don't go linear, because if you want, if you... There are multiple, because you know there are multiple ways to play an adventure, and if you set your adventure to be played a particular way, well, chances are the adventure is not going to go so far, and your adventure is just going to flop. Have a way to have multiple ways to play your adventure, rather than just playing it the way you intended it. Other than that, enjoy building your adventure, and I hope to see your adventure thrive. Yeah, a lot of these things should be easy enough to understand, but yeah, pretty much we're just going to say that's going to be it for the basics of what the Poseidon Beside Tutorials, uh, Adventure Editor Tutorial, at least, covers. No, no. It's basic enough, but what we're going to, but basically that's going to do it for this tutorial for the Poseidon Adventure Editor. I know this is sucky and not very well informative. But, I did my best. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget, leave a like, post a comment, share this video with your friends, and as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you next time, everyone.